Hi everybody. Before we get into the thick of this video, I just wanted to put a standard disclaimer in. This is by no means an instructional video or advice on how to install lithium batteries in your boat. You should all do your own research uh, and make sure that you are comfortable with what you're doing. This is purely uh, an update on how things have gone with my installation and the benefits that we feel that we're seeing from having installed the, uh, the lithium batteries. Today's video is going to be a little bit technical. Uh, I thought it'd be good to uh, revisit the lithium batteries and just give everybody an insight into how we're finding them performing. Now we're out continuous cruising. Uh, I think uh, one or two friends have questioned, you know, has it been worthwhile, etc. And uh, it's working really well, and I think it'd be good for people to uh, to just get some insight into what the difference has been, or what, or how we're uh, how we're seeing things going uh, when we're cruising out on the cut. As you may be aware, I installed a Home Assistant in the boat, and Home Assistant is getting quite a lot of data from the Victron equipment, uh, so we can see uh, a history of uh, our use, a history of our charging, etc. So I'll be sticking up quite a few uh, charts and graphs uh, just to give you some insight into uh, sort of the long-term use that we're, we're seeing out of the batteries. Uh, I'm sure the video is not going to be for everybody, uh, but I think those of you who have got lithium or are considering lithium uh, might find it interesting. I'm going to split the video down into a number of sections, uh, starting with the install. So we'll just review the install, make sure it's all uh, still good, uh, check connections, terminations, that kind of thing. Then we'll look at uh, consumption, how, uh, how our average consumption seems to go. Uh, and then we'll go uh, after that into the charging side of things and look at uh, look at what we're having to do in order to keep the power topped up. Here we can see the uh, schematic for the boat. Uh, feel free to pause the video and have a look a bit in more detail. Okay, I'm sure those of you that saw the uh, installation video will recognise this. Uh, these are the uh, shunts for the battery management system. This is the master shunt that uh, measures a combined bank. Uh, this is the shunt for the lithium ion, uh, uh, sorry, the LiPo 4 batteries. Uh, and this is the shunt for the lead acid system. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to check all the connections, make sure we hadn't seen anything vibrating loose. Uh, we've been running the system now for ooh, we now we're in March, maybe three, four months. Uh, so I just want to check everything. This is the battery case. Uh, under here are the three lithium uh, ion phosphate batteries, the lead acid for the leisure system and the starter battery. Uh, I'll just pop the cover off and then uh, we can have a look underneath, check terminations etc. Here you can see the installation of our three lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries. Now we've got two 200 amp hour batteries and one 100 amp hour battery giving us a total of 500 amp hours of uh, lithium power. Here you can see the two solar controllers, uh, one for the three original solar panels uh, that were on the boat when I got it, and a second one which deals with the two new panels that we uh, that we installed. And here you can see our Victron inverter. As previously stated, I have installed Home Assistant on the boat, and this allows me to bring all of the information about the batteries back to the home assistant system as you can see here we've got three columns one for the hybrid system one for the lead acid and one for the lithiums and across the top are the details of the individual lithium batteries the uh, two 200s and the 100 and by accessing that i can also as you can see here find 
detail of the individual battery temperatures, cell balance, etc. That gives me a, a lot of flexibility and a lot of data to work on to make sure that the system's running properly and that we're not at risk of any fires or over over stressing the batteries in any way, shape or form. The good news is that the system's all looking good, no loose connections, no signs of anything getting hot anywhere. So uh, I'm reasonably comfortable that after three, four months of use, the system's working as planned uh, and there are no signs of any adverse conditions developing. So the first thing we did uh, before we even bought the batteries was do a, an internal power audit of the boat. Uh, here you can see on the screen our original audit uh, with our guesstimations really of what the use was going to be at any one time. And as you can see from that it looks like we need a good 300 amp hours just to run one day. Now obviously some of the items are only occasional use but we broke it down into the power required per 24 hour period. Again we had to take into account the space available uh, and it was quite clear that we weren't going to be able to get much more than the 500 amp hours in place that we uh, that we finally ended up with. With this in mind we envisaged that the uh, the battery bank that we were looking to purchase would give us approximately two days uh, supply. We were also able to leverage the data coming into Home Assistant and uh, whilst we were in the marina still on the 240 uh, main supply we could see that we were consuming somewhere between 120 and 150 amp hours per day as you can see on the, uh, the graph attached. We also benefited from solar uh, but we just uh, treated this as a bonus. This chart shows the situation following the installation of the batteries. As you can see overnight we're consuming somewhere between 5 and 7 amps. Pretty consistently that's the IT and the fridges. We then see the solar kick in and start to, uh, start to feed the system. Uh, it doesn't really get to the point where it's generating but it's, it's certainly taking the load of the system. Then through the course of the day we've got quite a lot of high use in and out. Uh, that will be TVs and uh, cooking etc. And then during the evening time uh, solar dies away and our usage is a little bit higher because we've got probably the TV on or something like that. And then settling back down at the end of the night to the, uh, to the 5 to 7 amp point again. The bottom part of the chart shows that we consume about 20% of our battery capacity during that 24 hour period. This last chart just shows the uh, overnight period in a little bit more detail. Clearly the fridges are the highest demand during the overnight period uh, and what we need to cater for. This next chart shows uh, us off the uh, main supply for about three days and if you look at the bottom chart you can see that our consumed amp hours sits at about a hundred between 100 and 150 per day uh, there are small amounts of solar topping it back up obviously this is winter time uh, but that shows that uh, about 120 amp hours per day is our needs so uh, in conclusion then uh, Real world testing has identified that we need somewhere in the region of 100 to 150 amp hours of, uh, of battery or of power per 24 hour period. Uh, I think the discrepancy between the uh, power audit we did at the start and, uh, and the real life measurements so that we're, we're really quite frugal. I was quite generous in my time calculations sort of how often we'd use an electric kettle etc uh, in winter obviously we've got a kettle on the stove most of the time uh, and I think this is something like 70 odd amp hours per 24 hour period just for the kettle uh, were we to be using an electric kettle now that use of the electric kettle may go up in summer uh, but obviously there will be more solar to compensate we also need to uh, take into account uh, real world usage. I mean, our continuous cruising plans mean that we would be uh, 
probably chugging three or four hours each morning or at least every other day uh, so that would uh, give us uh, engine charging for that amount of time which would easily replenish the uh, the overnight use and obviously in summer we get much more solar and uh, you know the years moving on we're already seeing the benefit of that now uh, so uh, I think the power audit was good uh, I think it, it put us on the right track for the uh, the batteries that we needed to buy uh, I think the real world measurements show that we are much more frugal than uh, than uh, the power audit led to believe uh, and I think that's put us in a good position going forwards. So on to sources of energy then. Uh, on Tommy we are quite lucky we've got our Victron charger which provides uh, up to 60 amps of charging uh, from the main supply. We also have a travel power generator working from the engine uh, which again allows us to run that 60 amp charger from the Victron unit. Uh, we have a, a 110 amp hour alternator, uh, 12 volt alternator on the engine uh, and then obviously we've got our strings of solar which give us about 735 watts. On to charging then. This clip uh, clearly shows a positive charge of 23 amps from a solar current of about 31 amps uh, initially. But then uh, I think Carol's got the bread maker on here, so as the uh, as a bread maker kicks in, currently, or, or you quickly see the uh, the current from the batteries drop to a negative number as it's feeding the uh, the cooker, but the solar. Uh, still maintaining about 430 watts of power uh, giving us about uh, 31 amps uh, of current into the batteries. Obviously solar, uh, uh, solar is fickle uh, it's dependent on the weather and the state of the sky at any one time but it's definitely uh, helps to, uh, to push the range out of the batteries in the system. Uh, this slide slows the uh, the output of the solar system uh, over the last 90 days and as you can see from March onwards we're seeing more solar uh, coming into the system uh, but obviously it's very uh, fickle as I say it uh, jumps around quite a lot as the sun goes out, clouds come past etc. This slide uh, again shows the total value of solar generated over that same period and you can see that it's increasing all the time as we move towards summer. And this final slide is just showing a typical day in April uh, where we've generated about 2.2 kilowatt hours. So moving on to generating from the engine then, uh, this slide shows a, a number of days where you can see we've run uh, for a few hours in the morning. Uh, we see somewhere in the region of 100 and 105 amps that's made up of uh, of the charge from the Victron unit running off the travel power and the charge uh, coming from uh, our 110 amp alternator which really runs at about 50 amps once it's up to temperature and maybe 60 amps. This slide shows a, a typical morning cruise of about a couple of hours uh, you can see uh, that the battery charge immediately jumps up to a uh, hundred or so amps as described before and we can see that we've replenished the batteries to the tune of about 200 amp hours. Uh, that's plenty to keep us going on, uh, on normal days. This image is quite interesting because again it shows a, a morning run uh, and the batteries have been brought up to 100% and you can see that about from 8.15 onwards the BMSs on the lithiums are dropping out and they tend to drop out then top again for a bit, drop out, top again and that uh, drop out period extends over about an hour uh, and after that they stay full and, and no longer cut back into charging again but it's an interesting phenomenon. It also shows why the hybrid setup is uh, is really important in protecting the uh, the alternator for the boat because uh, you can see that you're jumping from what 80 amps down to zero uh, 
uh, and back in and out again and it's the uh, the lead acid battery that takes the uh, the shock of that change uh, and avoids any damage to the uh, the alternator or regulator pack I think another interesting feature on this uh, on this image is the fact that the uh, the Victron battery monitors reset themselves to 100% in in a bit of a step. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the battery monitors are not that accurate using the lithium batteries, and voltage is a much better measure of the state of charge of the batteries. Uh, we do find that after a, a number of cycles we find ourselves re recalibrating or at least charging for a length of time that allows them to auto recalibrate themselves back to 100%. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it's important to be aware of that. So in conclusion then, uh, I think the uh, lithium battery or hybrid lithium battery conversion that we've done has worked out really well for us. I think it's made our continuous cruising experience uh, much more comfortable. Uh, I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, being a techno chap and a bit of a fiddler, I tend to be on the high side in terms of consumption, so we needed to, uh, to cater for that in the boat. Uh, that said, uh, I still think the fridges are the biggest demand on the system in terms of uh, continuous energy usage uh, and uh, getting the most efficient fridge stroke freezer set up uh, is probably very important for everybody. The lithiums, the more lithium capacity you can get the better in my opinion. Uh, I do think the hybrid setup is a good option for protecting the alternator. Uh, and making the installation uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, in our case, the system three, four months in, well, it's probably five months in now, we, we are, we've had no failures, the uh, terminations all look strong and good, uh, nothing, uh, nothing's cropped up that's, uh, that, that we feel uneasy about or, or think that may be dangerous. Uh, we've never seen the temperatures go high in the uh, in the batteries, uh, and also in winter when we had you know an inch of ice on the canal, uh, we never saw the the engine room temperature drop to a point where the batteries went below zero. Uh, again, in my case, I've kept the protections at two degrees, I think, on the batteries, so they won't charge if they drop below two degrees, and we've never had a situation where we've been unable to, uh, to put a charge in the batteries. So all good from, uh, from our point of view. Uh, I hope everybody else has a, has a similar experience if they move towards the lithium, uh, the lithium option. Uh, I think you do need to be careful. Uh, you do need to do your own, uh, your own uh, investigations. Make sure that the application's right for you and that uh, any installation that you make is safe. Uh, but if you do that, uh, I think it's uh, nothing but good as far as we're concerned. Hope the video's not been too uh, too boring for everybody. I realise it's quite a high tech video for uh, for us. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back to the boat soon and be able to get some uh, some more canal footage uh, and get back to uh, to normal service as soon as possible. So thanks for watching. Look after yourselves, everybody.